There's a lot of confusion when it comes to GFCI and AFCI devices, and if you throw Surge in the mix too, it can get pretty confusing. So in this video, we're going to talk about the differences between these. We're going to talk about the most common myths I see, and we're going to bust those one by one. The first myth we're going to talk about is this belief that these devices last forever, and that's simply not true. These devices have electronics inside of them in order to provide the protection that's needed, and like any other electronic device, that protection can wear out over time. So it's recommended that you test these devices regularly. With a GFCI device, you should test these every month to make sure they're functioning properly, and with AFCI devices, you should test these every year to make sure their protection is intact. When either of these devices trip when you're normally using them, it's really tempting to just go up and hit the reset button in order to get everything working again, but you should also hit the test button one more time to make sure that the protection is still intact and still going to function properly when you need it again. It's also recommended to replace GFCI and AFCI protection every 15 to 20 years, and if you're wondering how that compares to a normal breaker, normal breakers should be replaced every 30 to 40 years. Another belief is that these devices, because they look so similar and they have similar names, is that you can interchange them or use either or depending on what your preference is or I guess depending on what your budget is, and that's simply not true either. GFCI devices provide protection against something called a ground fault, and these are normally found in wet areas like kitchens and bathrooms to prevent primarily against electrocution, and AFCI devices protect against an arc fault, which is when electrical current flows through the air and jumps either to another wire or another piece of metal or something else that it's not supposed to go to, and those arcs can actually cause a fire. So arc fault protection is designed to protect your house against fires, and ground fault protection, GFCIs, are designed to protect you from electrocution. GFCI devices have been around since 1968, and AFCI devices are a bit newer than that, but just know that you can't interchange these. They provide totally different types of protection. The next myth we're going to talk about is that AFCIs are new technology, and while they are newer than GFCI protection, it doesn't mean that they are new technology, unless you consider something that's been around for over 25 years as new. And honestly, look, I get it. Once you hit a 20-year high school reunion, your sense of time kind of gets thrown off. The first requirement for AFCI protection in a home was added to the NEC code in 1999, and in fact, this technology was being researched all the way back in the 1970s. And since these were first introduced in the NEC code, not only have their requirements remain, but their requirements have actually expanded into more areas of a home. So because of all that, AFCI is not a new technology and they're going to be here to stay. The next myth we're going to bust is this belief that GFCI devices also protect against electrical surges like lightning strikes. And that, again, is simply not true. GFCI devices, as we talked about, protect against something specific called a ground fault, which occurs when there's an imbalance between the hot and the neutral wires inside of this device. Now, there's circuitry to monitor that flow, and if that varies by even a small amount, then the circuitry inside is going to shut off the power flow between the hot and the neutral side, effectively killing the circuit. Surge protection, on the other hand, and saves electronics and electronic devices from voltage spikes that are caused by things like lightning strikes and power line issues. It does this by redirecting the extra current through the ground wire in order to discharge it. And just like GFCI and AFCI protection, surge protection can wear out too, so it's important to make sure that these are functioning properly. And with surge protection, these tend to wear out faster as well because the electronic components inside of these to discharge that extra electrical current can wear out pretty quickly, especially depending on how many issues your home electrical system sees. Another misbelief is that AFCI devices are only required in bedrooms, and while that was the case when these were first introduced, a lot has changed since these first came out in 1999. It's kind of like how phones have evolved since 1999, where they no longer have to have cords in order for them to work. Today, AFCI protection is required in almost every area of your house, including hallways and closets, and it kind of makes sense too when you think about it, because these devices are designed to protect a home against electrical fires, or at least a certain type of electrical fire, so you would want to make sure that this protection is everywhere it could possibly be to help make sure you and your home are safe. Another common misconception I hear is that GFCI devices require a ground wire in order to function properly, and that's simply not true either. In fact, I have something here that I want to show you. This is a GFCI plug that I pulled off of an old electric pressure washer. But the interesting thing about this is that when I flip it around, you can see here that there's only two prongs and there's no ground prong on this. And again, the reason for that is because you do not have to have a ground wire in order for GFCI protection to function properly. In fact, the only thing we've talked about that requires a ground wire in order to function 
function properly is a surge protection device. And the reason for that, again, is that any excess current needs to have some place to go. So it needs to have a ground wire in order to discharge that extra electrical current. But GFCIs and even AFCI devices don't need a ground wire to function properly. Now, obviously it's recommended that you do have ground wires installed everywhere in your home. But if you're trying to add GFCI or AFCI protection to an older home that doesn't have that ground wire, just know that you can still do it and it will provide a level of protection. Now, last but not least, I want to address this other common misconception that you don't have to have AFCI or GFCI protection if you have an older home, and that is only required for new homes and new construction. And while it is true that you typically see this in new home construction and you don't see it as often in older homes, it doesn't mean that older homes don't need to have this level of protection installed as well. In fact, if you're doing any type of electrical work in an area that requires this protection and it doesn't already have it in place, it doesn't mean you can simply replace those components with newer ones that don't meet code. You need to make sure you're following any code requirements that are in place currently. And that doesn't just apply to major renovations either. In fact, anytime you're doing any type of electrical work, you need to make sure that those devices are up to code. And if you want to see an example that's outside of the GFCI and AFCI space, if you're replacing a standard receptacle that doesn't have tamper resistant covers on it, then you need to be sure to pick up a tamper resistant receptacle to replace the old one with in order to make sure you're meeting current code requirements. So just because you have an older home doesn't mean you're off the hook for following current code. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and also be sure to check out this other video next. I'm sure you'll find it helpful too. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.